inside West Papua, a province which also seeks self-determination and independence from Indonesia. It should have had it decade, decades ago, when instead it got the act of free choice, which was, of course, no free choice at all. Um, we have, at the moment, military operations against low-level guerrilla resistance uh, by the Free Papua Movement, which is uh, under the acronym OPM, and that's led to widespread uh, and indiscriminate reprisals against citizens. Uh, so, uh, Indonesia made international headlines earlier this month. I'm sure you remember the leaked videos that showed West Papuan men being tortured they were broadcast around the world. One man was interrogated by while Indonesian soldiers held him on the ground and applied a burning stick to his genitals. In another, a Papuan man was disemboweled by soldiers who taught him for his political views as he bleeds to death. This footage was shocking, but nothing new. For West Papuans, these are not isolated incidents. Munir spent his life documenting incidents like this, and at least new media technology is allowing us to see the, the atrocities being committed. But what's been done to prevent them? The Indonesian authorities have confirmed that the videos are authentic, so that at least they're not taking, uh, <laughs> maintaining the position that they don't, their troops don't torture. Um, the perpetrators they accept of their soldiers uh, who've acted, I quote, unprofessionally and have, quote, overreacted in their treatment of detainees. Well, hope burning people's genitals and, uh, and disemboweling is not just overreaction, it's torture and it's an abhorrent international crime. The government said it would have a full investigation and uh, just before Julia Gillard, the Australian Prime Minister, arrived, the President announced that the soldiers involved were going on trial. But this was a lie, or at least it was misinformation, uh, because uh, they were, there were a couple of soldiers going on trial, but for a completely different matter. Uh, the President, I think, had been misinformed deliberately by the military, uh, which put him uh, in some uh, diplomatic embarrassment. And uh, it wasn't so much a matter of incompetence as uh, indicative of the military's desire to deflect criticism while avoiding responsibility and claiming impunity. As uh, Brad Adams from Human Rights, Rights Watch said, I don't know whether they're just pretending to be stupid or whether they're willfully trying to fool the president. But uh, we wait to see what happens in that case, which of course is getting attention because it's public. What hope is there for justice for other abuses in West Papua that have been going on for ages? It's not likely, I'm afraid, the, the Apapura case uh, is, is indicative, I think, in that uh, area. It involved torture and murder by the police. It was heard in the Human Rights Court in 2004, uh, the first case from Papua to be heard by the Indonesian courts after a lot of lobbying by families. Um, and it was a case that had resulted as a re police reprisal after a separatist movement uh, had killed two policemen. Uh, the police raided the local student boarding houses um, in retaliation local students weren't guilty of the attack, but they shot one and more than a hundred were taken into police custody uh, and subjected to torture when two more students died uh, and others were left permanently injured. And uh, this fortunately was witnessed by a, a Swiss journalist who'd been taken into custody for taking what the police called political photos, but he did witnessed the brutality and reported uh, the case. But um, the National Human Rights Committee have named 25 suspects, including the Chief and Deputy Chief of Police. But only two policemen of lower ranks were charged and both uh, were acquitted on the grounds that they were middle-ranking officers and they'd acted appropriately and 
there was no evidence that they had ordered the attack, even though they knew what was happening and failed to take action to prevent and punish it. No judgments in their case has been made available, uh, which is sadly common in Indonesia, so one can't criticize the, um, uh, the decision. Um, but uh, it was again reported by the Papuan Alliance for Democracy that the case failed because the prosecutor presented a very weak case. But it's yet another example where notorious perpetrators escape prosecution or if they are prosecuted they are likely to be acquitted because of the poor caliber of the prosecution and it suggests that uh, impunity is alive and well in West Papua. So when human rights defenders like Munier or those innocent West Papuan civilians are murdered and tortured with impunity and the state fails to bring the perpetrators to justice, what can we do? What is the role of regional or international mechanisms? There was an interesting development last month when the president was about to take off to visit the Netherlands uh, for a state visit. He'd been invited. He had complete immunity as a, as a uh, <coughs> head of state and had been invited. So there was no real chance of him being uh, arrested. But uh, a, an opponent took out, uh, an organization took him, tried to get a warrant uh, for his arrest from The Hague and uh, his plane sat on the tarmac in Jakarta for a couple of hours and then uh, he decided not to go. So uh, it is, does show that there is a great degree of nervousness uh, in uh, amongst the Indonesian elite at <coughs> even the possibility of ending up in The Hague and uh, so that uh, visit was cancelled and we do find a kind of sanction uh, at least for presidents who do want to travel abroad uh, after they leave office or while they're in office that uh, they fear universal jurisdiction.